The second course in this series is called Applied Business Statistics. And in that course, I'm going to be teaching you a variety of statistical hypothesis tests. This course is basic business statistics. And in this course, I've been teaching you all of the basics, the fundamentals that you need for us to be able to do hypothesis testing. We started by learning descriptive statistics, and then we learned about probability. Then we learned about samples and populations, and we put all those pieces together with hypothesis testing. For the first time, however, we are going to apply what we have been learning. We are going to actually do some hypothesis tests. Some I'm going to show you how to do by hand. Others we'll be doing using software. But for all of these tests, both in this course and in applied business statistics, I'm going to be using the same five steps of hypothesis testing. Let's begin by reviewing those steps. Step number one is to select the appropriate test based upon the levels of measurement for our data. This will always be the easiest of the five steps of hypothesis testing, because the answer to what test are we going to use is always going to be whatever test we're learning about right now. Of course, in the real world, you need to know this material well enough that you can make these choices on your own. Step number two is to establish a null and alternative hypothesis. We are going to test the null hypothesis to see if there is sufficient evidence to reject the null and to accept the alternative hypothesis. Step three is to select a criterion for statistical significance. We're going to place our bets. We're going to establish before we begin what level of evidence we're willing to accept for statistical significance. And we can do that using p-values, probabilities. We could do that using a critical value that we establish based on degrees of freedom or a number that we look up in a table. Or we can do it using confidence intervals. Once we have worked through these first three steps, we are ready for step number four. Calculate the test statistic, which we will do either by hand or using statistical software. And then we get to step five. We must interpret the test results and write up the findings. And for every test that I teach you, I'm going to give you an example of how to write up the findings in APA style. Today, we're gonna to learn three tests and they all have something in common. They all follow the same example in which we have a population. We're going to draw a sample from that population. What is true of the population should also be true of the sample which has been drawn from that population. And if we don't know about the population, what is true of the sample should also be true of the population from which it was drawn. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about means. The mean of the population should determine the mean of the sample. If this is a good representative random sample, then the mean of the sample should be the same as the population from which it was drawn. We're going to do the same thing with proportions, however. If 42% of the population has a certain characteristic, then any sample drawn from that population should also have around 42% of the people having that same characteristic. And if we didn't know what the value was in the population, we could draw a sample, test the sample, and what is true from the sample should also extrapolate back to the population. What is true of the sample should be true of the population from which it was drawn. What is true of the population should be true of a sample drawn from that population. Do you have that basic idea? If so, then we're ready for me to tell you about the three types of hypothesis tests that we're gonna learn about this week. The first is a one sample Z test, which we will use when we have scaled data in which the mean and the standard deviation of the population are both known. A one sample Z test is used to test for differences between means. A one sample t-test is an alternative to a z-test 
that we can use when the mean of the population is known or estimated, but the standard deviation of the population is unknown. Both the z-test and the t-test look for differences in means. However, there is one other test that we need to learn about, and that is a one-sample proportion test. This test is used to measure whether a population proportion is statistically significantly different than a sample proportion. All three of these tests use the same general design. We draw a sample from a population. The sample statistic, if it is a good random representative sample, should be the same as the population parameter. And that is the hypothesis that we are going to test for all three of these examples. We are going to start with a null hypothesis that says there is no difference between the sample mean and the population parameter. That the sample statistic should be exactly the same as the population parameter from which that sample was drawn. And then we're going to learn three ways to test that using hypothesis testing.